Hi, and welcome to the first One Hour Wine Wine Bottle Masterclass. So, this all started back in the days when we weren't allowed out, and people still ask me for advice. And the way I like to taste wines is you sit down with the enophile and hopefully in a preferentially in a, a really good wine bar, and you order things off the wine list at will, and you talk about them and explain why the wine tastes how it does. Now, obviously, we can't do that because we can't taste online. What we can do is pretty much know what a wine tastes like without tasting it. Why? Because the bottles give us a huge amount of clues as to what's inside. So this series, and we'll do three short videos, um, basically looks at the different sorts of wine bottles and what they are telling us and what the winemaker is telling us through his choice of bottle about the wines inside. Now, it relates specifically to Portuguese wines, but a lot of what I'm saying are general rules across international winemaking. Um, so we're going to start with something really obvious, and it won't take a genius to work out what's in here. So that's the first bottle. Now, clearly it's sparkling. Why? Because we've got the cage, okay? And the cage holds the cork in against the pressure. And there's also a very pronounced lip round here that the cage catches onto to stop the cork coming out, um, given that the wine has obviously got a lot of um, carbon dioxide dissolved in it. The other thing, it's very heavy. Why? Obviously, the glass has to be thick to support the pressure of the wine. And you can also see that in the depth of the punt, which again gives a bottle uh, more structural um, resistance um, against the, the, the fact that the wine is, is fizzy. Um, it's much heavier because the walls of the glass are thicker. And the other thing that I think is obvious but important to mention, this is a clear glass bottle. Why? Because it is a sparkling rosé. Okay, it's a pink wine. And most people, when they pick up a bottle of sparkling wine, would expect it to be white. Um, so they're quite clearly showing you through the colour, or the clear glass, they're showing you the colour of the wine. Rosé, um, or, or sparkling rosé, is made all over Portugal. Uh, we tend to use native grape varieties in Portugal. Uh, we've got about 285 Portuguese grape varieties. Um, and why is it pink? Because it's actually made from red grapes. Uh, you can pretty much make white wine from almost without exception any red grape. It's just a question of how long the grape skins are in contact with the liquid. Okay. Um, if you look at the grape champagnes, Pinot Noir is a major component. You're only allowed to use three grapes, and Pinot Noir is, is a red grape. Um, it's, the colour will depend on how long the grapes are left in contact with the liquid. But this is a delicious wine. It shows you exactly what it is. There's no reason for getting confused about that one. Just going to jump on to a non-sparkling rosé and look at the standard bottle shape. So this is a, again, a transparent bottle. It has to be with a rosé. Uh, I'm not going to show you who made it because they've actually used a screw cap, which I think when you're producing wine in the world's biggest producer of corks, you probably shouldn't. Um, there are no proven advantages of, of screw caps over corks. The TCA issue has is all but disappeared. Uh, again, key point, transparent glass, tells you the colour of the wine. And we mentioned earlier skin contact. So the paler the wine, the less skin contact it's had. That means you're probably going to get less developed, more subtle floral flavours rather than fruity flavours. So if you see a very dark rosé, then it's probably going to have quite intense fruity flavour. Whereas a pale rosé is going to be a lighter wine, it's going to be more floral.
Now we've got quite an unusual bottle shape. So this wine comes from the Vigno Verd region. So I'm going to pause for a second and show you the map. So now you're looking at the very top left corner, so northwest. Um, if you need to, do pause the video so you can find it on the map. But it says Vigno Verd. So Vigno Verd, being northerly, is a relatively cool region. Um, it gets a lot of rain because it's on the Atlantic coast and Portuguese weather patterns tend to come in off the Atlantic. And the thing about the Vigno Verde is they have a few grapes there, particularly this one, which is an Alvarinho, which are extremely aromatic, floral, and pretty similar in style to the sorts of wines that you get from the really high altitude, cold climate, uh, French, by which I mean Alsace, Lorraine, and on the border with Germany, Austria, Switzerland, the very cool climate white wines. So they tend to be low in alcohol, high in aromaticity, and the classic great styles there would be Riesling and Gewurztraminer. And this bottle is clearly uh, evoking the traditional uh, Riesling style bottle, which actually, even in Australia, they use very similar bottles for their Rieslings. So it's a light wine, it's a fruity wine, and the interesting thing is they've actually chosen on the label quite a Germanic typeface. So again, they're telling you this is our version of Riesling. Um, the Alvarinho grape is, is pretty similar, but it's not quite as floral as, as the Riesling is. This, obviously, this compares with a more traditional standard wine bottle, such as that, which is clearly a different shape, with the shoulder. Um, standard white wine bottle. What's not standard about it, and this is one I've had to drink for the benefit of this explanation. So it's from the same producer. Uh, it's not the same wine, but it is the same bottle. And what you can see is the bottle's actually made out of blue glass. Now, I think that looks really cool. The only problem is that when it's full of wine, you can't really tell. And when it's empty, it's probably in the recycling bin. There's actually a slight disadvantage, is that white wine, as it ages, it will tend to oxidise very slowly. So it will lose its colour, and it will start to brown. The problem with these blue bottles is that you can't tell if a white wine has oxidised a little bit too far. So, yeah, it's cool. Is it great for the consumer? Not really, because you run the risk of getting a wine that's gone past it. And compared with the other bottles that we've looked at. Just going to show you one more. So this is a similar in format, okay? But it's obviously not standard. You can see that the proportions don't meet up. Um, it's got a more pronounced shoulder, and actually the bottle tapers. And the tapered bottle looks very classy, but when you change a bottling machine for a different format of bottle, there's a lot of fine tuning in setting up the machine, okay? So it's a little bit more expensive to bottle because of the, the labor costs of changing around the machine and you may need to change some components. The other thing is this bottle tapers very slightly, which means actually you've got to get a label that tapers very slightly and then hopefully you can get it to stick flush to the bottle without any wrinkles. But when you have a non-standard bottle, be aware of the fact that the winemaker thinks it's a good wine and it's worth the extra effort. And the last bottle we're going to look at is the what I call the Burgundy style bottle. So if you compare it with the, this is the, the Bordeaux style bottle with the shoulder. The Burgundy style bottle is significant in that in France, the coolest wine producing or second coolest wine producing areas is Burgundy. Now, 
cool viticulture is generally very good for white wines, okay? So what they are saying is that this wine is wants to be associated with the best white wines from France. So it comes from a region called the Dun, and if you look at the map, we'll go to the map now. It's the blue patch just north of centre. Um, so cooler climates mean fresher grapes, you don't get uh, over ripeness, the wines are more subtle, they're more aromatic. Um, and generally speaking, with Portuguese wines, they're associated possibly with a more traditional, um, refined style. And I would say, generally speaking, that if you've got this shaped bottle in Portugal, you've got a hot climate wine, some people like big bold whites, and these are less likely to be oaked. Um, they're, generally speaking, slightly more refined, aromatic, delicate wines. Uh, come back for the next session, we'll be looking at the red wines. Thank you.